And I think those actually cover the biggest calculation questions. So what I should focus on for the remainder of this session is really just going through the set. And uh, when I, so I'm going to be covering conceptual questions this time as well. Now, what I will be skipping most of the time are multiple choice questions. By multiple choice, I mean questions with a single answer. Um, so, uh, so this is not an example of multiple choice, so I'll maybe come back to that. Um, so questions like, you know what, let me just start from the beginning and I'll tell you which questions I'll skip and why. <laughs> so, uh, so let me start from here. It says, um, choose, so yeah, I don't need to read it to decide if I want to spend time on it and then choose all statements below which correctly compare or contrast the momentum with the kinetic energy. Yeah, okay. So I, I think it's uh, worth uh, a while for me to go over um, because momentum and kinetic energy are, um, they are both quantities that deal with emotion. And in fact, in the early history of physics, people were, um, there were debates about which quantities consider, uh, which quantities conserved when considering motion. And uh, it turned out there were proponents of some uh, people who thought something like momentum was conserved. There are proponents of people who thought something like ki kinetic energy was conserved. And it turns out they are both right. Uh, in the right circumstances, both are conserved. So uh, it's, uh, I think, worthwhile just to drawing that comparison. So kinetic energy is something that you uh, have seen in chapter four. And momentum is what you are going to see in uh, chapter five. And um, th th there's a formula, <laughs> things that you can drive or comes from definition that you can write down. With the kinetic energy, um, it's uh, derived from consideration of energy and work. And when you finish the derivation, the expression you have is one half. There's the factor one half for some reason. It's important that it's there. Uh, times mass, times, and this is the important part. It uh, Kinetic energy comes as a speed squared. And this being speed squared, it has important um, implication in a couple ways. One is that the um, direction doesn't matter, even in like one dimensional sense, you know, positive velocity, negative velocity. Once you square it, they are both end up being positive. So whether you have something that's moving to the right or something moving to the left, that distinction doesn't matter when you're considering kinetic energy. Now the expression for the momentum, this is, uh, uh, this is definition of momentum. We just define momentum to be this. So momentum P, letter P is what we use for some reason, is given by mass times velocity. And ca note carefully how I didn't say speed, velocity. So uh, velocity is a, it's a vector quantity. It has a sense of direction. And the momentum like velocity is a vector quantity. It has a sense of direction. So with the velocity, it matters if something has rightward velocity or leftward velocity. And that distinction carries over to momentum. So when you have a positive velocity, let's say something moving to the right, then it also has positive momentum uh, or moment rightward momentum. So that's the biggest uh, um, kind of introductory difference between the kinetic energy and momentum. So um, there'll be some choices that relate to that and then I'll see which other distinctions that come up. So going through the choices here, it says um, when kinetic energy does not change, momentum also does not change. Ah. So I, I like to look for what I call counter examples. So what I'm looking for here is, okay, let's uh, suppose uh, I'm trying to imagine a scenario where kinetic energy doesn't change. And I'm gonna look for if I can come up with a situation where momentum does change. So for kinetic energy not to change, my speed has to remain constant. Ah, but if I want the momentum to change, I can make it so that the direction of velocity changes. 
Okay, I have a good example with a circular motion. You know, uniform circular motion, something can be moving at constant speed in circle and its velocity will be changing. So it's not, this is incorrect, so I'm not gonna check it. <laughs> when speed of an object doubles, both its kinetic energy and magnitude of its momentum doubles, a kinetic energy is squared. So if a speed doubled, then kinetic energy will have double squared or quadrupled. Okay. Kinetic energy is a vector and momentum is a scalar. Yeah, it's the other way around. <laughs> kinetic energy is scalar, momentum is a vector. When speed of an object doubles, it's kinetic energy. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So that is correct. When kinetic energy is zero, momentum is also zero. Hmm. So kinetic energy being zero means the speed is zero. So if a speed is zero, hey, I think velocity has to be zero. I have no other choice. So yeah, that, I, I don't think I, so if you want, you can try to find the counter example, but I, I don't think I can find it. So I won't waste any of your time, but you, you are welcome to see if you can come up with a counter example. Okay, kinetic energy is a scalar and momentum is a vector. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. So yeah, those three choices should uh, give you everything. Yeah, so. And I want to really emphasize here that kinetic energy and momentum, they, they are different quantities. Now they are related. In fact, there's a way to write kinetic energy. I could write kinetic energy in this form. Um, using these definitions, I can write down kinetic energy as uh, one half times momentum squared over M or mass. So they are related but they are not the same quantity. There are certain ways they're different and that's what this question is trying to get at. Okay, if there are no questions here, let me move on to the next question. Um, you know, I, I think this is probably, yeah, especially with a hint here, the different expressions for momentum, I think most people can get it, so. I'll just skip it, even though it's not multiple choice. Um, I think it's gonna be a good unit exercise for people. Um, and choose all correct mathematical relationships below. Um, oh, uh, is this something that's worthwhile for me to do? It's possible. Um, you know, uh, let me do this because I think it's good for me to point out um, two different ways you can relate to momentum. It's kind of a common thing in physics, which is that given a quantity, usually there's multiple ways to relate to that quantity. You have seen that in chapter four with the work. Work has a definition based on force and displacement and work has a physical significance as meaning change in energy. And it's kind of similar with the momentum. So you, I've written one expression for momentum that momentum is defined as mass times velocity. So that's one way of relating to momentum that it's a uh, mass times velocity. And um, in fact, do I even see that here? Oh, I don't think I see that choice among here at all. So in order to even take a crack at this question, um, what you have to know is the other way to relate to momentum, uh, which is not, I guess the absolute, which is not the value of the momentum itself, but more about the change of momentum. So when you look at change of momentum, most of the time you are thinking about change in velocity, but uh, this relationship actually happens to be more widely applicable than even that. So, um, so let, me, um, let me give you this description, which is that um, change in momentum, so this quantity with a delta change in momentum, it relates most directly to what we call impulse. And impulse is, impulse is defined as, it's not defined as change in momentum, it's uh, defined as this quantity. Uh, force due to some object um, that's, due to some agent that's applying a force times a uh, duration of time. Now, um, 
Now, when you uh, start out with the impulse, uh, this being the definition of the impulse, and you uh, and you work through this, then uh, you can actually uh, get an expression which you will have seen in the textbook that this uh, force times the duration of time that is equal to change in momentum that is attributable to that particular force. So if there's a single force, then that is the actual change in momentum. Or if you are talking about the net force, then net force will also relate to that change of momentum. So, so that's the second way you relate to momentum. And there's a parallel to draw between this and how work relates to force. Uh, work relates to force through its definition. Work is a force times a displacement. And, um, and you can also relate change in momentum to force times not displacement, but duration of time. So one of the expressions here is, is ex exactly that. Uh, there it is. The change in momentum is net force times duration of time. That's uh, what I was saying there. And you can also turn this expression around. If you have this uh, algebraic expression, uh, let me just uh, solve it for net force. When I solve it for net force, so uh, uh, let me give myself a little bit of space here. Um, so I'm doing this delta P, uh, that's in fine enough color. So that's the expression I'm starting with. And uh, I can imagine doing this. I can multiply uh, the whole thing through one over delta t. That means on the left-hand side, I divide by delta t. On the right-hand side, I divide by delta t. And on the left-hand side, I end up with a change in momentum divided by duration of time. On the right-hand side, I end up with net force the duration of time having canceled out. So I have this expression here, which is this one here. And uh, what I want to highlight is that this actually, um, so we take this to be the actual definition of force. It's a, uh, um, um, I, I guess in this class, we don't have, we don't uh, have a, we don't often see a situation where this distinction matters because the potential here is to have these two potentially different expression for net force. Um, in unit one, you have seen this description of net force, that net force is mass times acceleration. And what I'm saying now is that, oh, that's not the net force or, um, <laughs> or that may or may not be the net force. What I'm saying is that this is the expression that I want to hold on to. So if I say net force is change of momentum per duration of time, then um, you can kind of work through the algebra through here. If I plug in for momentum, sorry, let me just mute my cell phone. If I plug in for momentum mass times velocity, then you have mass times the velocity, delta t. And now you might think, oh, these two are actually the same because if I have change of mass times velocity, I can say, all right, mass times change of velocity per change of duration of time. And for those of you who remember chapter two stuff, you might remember that acceleration was rate of change of velocity, delta V over delta T. So you might say, oh, that's a mass times acceleration. These two are equal to each other. So we are just saying the two things are the same. And what I want to caution here is that this expression here, it depends on mass not changing. There are circumstances where mass can change. Uh, rocket propulsion is actually one of them. And in those circumstances where these two expressions, one and two, will be different. So you can't say they are the same thing as each other. So they are always agreeing with each other. You can't say that. 
in those circumstances, the expression we hold on to is this one. Uh, on those rarer circumstances where these two disagree, what is actually universally true, what we might even call is the definition of net force is the second expression. Uh, we just didn't introduce it, this as the first thing because even to talk about this expression, you need the, the idea of momentum and it took us uh, this many weeks to reach this point. So, so yeah, that's, uh, um, the, that's the, how change of momentum relates to force. So let me submit here and scan my screen for any questions and <laughs> not seeing any questions, <laughs> move on to the Next question. I might need to go faster. Um, let's see. I probably have another 10 minutes or so on this set. Let me see if uh, uh, I think uh, yeah, I, 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 this is kind of repetitive of what we did in question one. So I think I can safely skip this. Uh, finally, my first multiple choice question. So this uh, circle is tells me that this there's only one right answer. And with the questions like this, my experience usually is that they are not, they are usually the easier questions and people usually know once they get the right answer, why the right answer is right. So I'm gonna skip this. Um, question six. Now I haven't done question six, but I think it is quite similar to question eight. Uh, which way did it similar? So, okay, this is question six. Uh, it's a question that involves numbers. So uh, I, I think most of this is applying the definition of momentum and uh, I, so, you know, applying the definition of momentum. So let me just work through that. Some of this could be a, a useful calculator exercise. So um, it says a runner of some mass runs at some speed, speed, and uh, I'm looking at the unit of my answer. It's kilogram meter per second. So even though the question is giving me the speed in miles per hour, uh, I don't think I need it. I don't know why the question gives it. So I'm just gonna ignore it. <laughs> um, and let me, uh, I, I think I can just do it on my calculator. So momentum is defined as mass times velocity. And here it's just asking for magnitude. I'm, unless uh, the question draws my attention to it, I'm not really gonna worry about is it positive or negative. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's not asking me for directions. Um, so 56 times nine, 504 kilogram meter per second. That's the unit of momentum, by the way. Um, momentum is one of those quantities um, that are important and it doesn't have its own unit. This is the unit of momentum. We don't have any special name for it. So just, yeah. Okay, on automobile, so that's it for part A, part B. On automobile of some mass, speeds down freeway, at a speed of 64 miles per hour. Do I need to convert this? Uh, yeah, if necessary, review this video on unit conversion. Um, I guess. Yeah, you know what, let me do this uh, another demonstration of unit conversion. Uh, but before I do, let me just show you a really quick way to answer this question so that people know that, uh, you know, if somehow you're struggling with the unit conversion, I think it's a useful skill, but at some point you have to decide on the, the pain to gain scale, whether it's worth it or not. <laughs> Ultram Alpha, it's a, a unit aware system. You can simply put in uh, quantities with a unit and you can even ask for the unit that you want it. I want it in this unit, kilogram meter per second, kilogram meter per second. Then it'll just do the calculation for you and give you the answer right here. So <laughs> let me just highlight that, that this can be done in like five seconds and then take another two, three minutes to actually work it out. So, um, so what I need to do is, um, because my speed is only given in the unit of uh, miles per hour, I need to convert that to, um, meters per second. And since I'm doing this the long way, let me do it the long way. 
Um, so, so let me look up the conversion factors for miles to meter and uh, hours to seconds that I know. So, so I need the miles to meter. And your textbook actually has a section of useful information where you can get all this information from one source, uh, which um, I guess you can also Google for it, but hey, <laughs> I'm providing all this material in one course. So there's an appendix called useful information. And that's where you will have um, things like a table of conversion factors. Uh, selected the British units, I think that's the one. Uh, yeah, British unit or imperial unit or customer unit of length, uh, uh, there it is, miles to kilometer. So uh, I want to convert it to meters. So I'm gonna just write it down as a miles to meter conversion, which is one mile is equal to, that's the, in kilometers, I multiply by a thousand for meters. So 1,609 meters. I'll just spell it out so that I don't confuse mile with a meter. Okay, so I think that's all I needed. Um, so the unit conversion. So uh, I can actually do this entire calculation in one go. In one go, it'll look like this. For my momentum P, I want mass times speed or mass times velocity. Mass is in kilograms. 1600 kilogram times. Now I'll start by writing the speed in miles per hour, 64 miles per hour. Now the challenge that I face that I should recognize if I'm paying attention to units is that my final answer needs to be in units of kilogram meter per second. I have unit of kilogram mile per hour. So this is where I'm going to do the unit conversion in place. And the basic paradigm for unit conversion is that I'm multiplying by factors of one. So each time I multiply something, it's going to be a quantity that's one because the numerator and the denominator are the same quantity. So, uh, and I construct those in such a way to cancel out the units I don't want and get me the units I do want. So I don't want miles, I do want meters. So as I constructed this uh, fraction, I want miles on the bottom. So let me put one mile on bottom. And uh, looking at this conversion factor here, if I want this uh, fraction to be one uh, for the numerator, I want it to be 1609 meter because then the quantity on the numerator and the denominator, they have a different numbers, but they are the same quantity. So this whole thing is one. So that's what I mean, multiply by one. So I need to do that for um, the time as well. So I'm gonna be multiplying by something that's equal to an hour, but it's gonna be in uh, seconds. So let me construct this here. To cancel out the hour, I want one hour on the numerator. So on the denominator, I'm gonna put what's equivalent to, to one hour, but in seconds. So one hour has 60 minutes. And in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So it should be 60 times 60 seconds. Or uh, let me actually write this out. Uh, it should be 3,600 seconds. Uh, but if you don't, I happen to have that memorized. If you don't, you just do 60 times 60 to get 3,600 seconds. So yeah, so that's the, this is how the unit conversion is laid out. So we do all this calculation, miles cancel out, hours cancel out. And I end up with the meters per second. So, so I think I'm ready to do the rest in uh, just the calculator. So I have 1600 times 64 times 1609 divided by 3600. Uh, I skipped all the ones since they don't do anything. Um, okay, 45. Thousand and seven hundred. Uh, let me round it to three significant sig figures. So four, five, eight, zero, zero kilogram meter per second. Uh, finally, uh, satellite is in a geosynchronous orbit, moves at a speed of that. If the mass of the satellite is that, oh, oh I guess this is a, a scientific notation exercise. So, so let me just. You multiply this out, um, then the number I get applying that uh, definition of uh, momentum as mass times velocity, 
it's gonna be 37, uh, mass of uh, 5,000 kilograms times 3,075 meters per second. So that's the answer. Now, if you simply put this in, um, that'll be wrong because uh, of what's following here. What we are looking for is a number that if you were to multiply by 10 to the power of six, then would we'll get you this number. So, um, oh, oh, so what I need to do to get that is I need to divide by 10 to the power of six. And this is how to do that division using scientific notation on a calculator like this. You divide by, and this is the calculator E notation for 10 to the power of six, or one times 10 to the power of six. So, um, so when I do that, the number I get is a, such a number that if I multiply 10 to the power of six, it'll get me back what I started out from. So 15.4, 15.4, a million or 10 to the power of six kilogram meter second. So that's it. It's a kind of calculation exercise. Um, I thought it would be useful to demonstrate it at least once. <laughs> Let me know any questions. And uh, I, I do want to emphasize that using Wolfram Alpha, it's a, uh, uh, wait, where's my Wolfram Alpha? Using Wolfram Alpha, it's perfectly fine. It's like, you know, using calculators in a math class. Uh, you know, there are times when I think it's useful to build up that skill of mental math. It's, uh, there are times when it's useful to build up that skill of manual unit conversion. And there are times when it's uh, not worth the trouble. So <laughs> you be the judge. <laughs> and uh, if uh, this unit conversion is frustrating you, use Wolfram Alpha. It's uh, a lot in this class most of the time. I, I don't think it's useful for people to learn to pay attention to units uh, just from conceptual understanding point of view. Okay, let me look at question 10 was the other question I was gonna look at. Um, yeah, 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 let me do that. Um, even though, yeah, let me, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at the time and seeing if, uh, um, even if we run short on time on other stuff, I, I think this. Uh, I think uh, in past semesters I've skipped this before, so uh, it's good that I'm finally getting to it once. So, so this is calling you to the idea of conservation of momentum, which is covered in chapter five, and it's saying, okay, one application of this is analyzing recoil, uh, backward kick experienced in launching projectiles perform the estimate using numbers given below to develop some number sense. So it's giving me all these numbers. Let me draw a figure. Um, yeah, let, let me start out with a figure that um, always helps me to um, make sure that I understood all the information that's given in a particular setup scenario uh, situation. So I have one object, let me call this A. Um, one object here, um, and uh, I have some amount of mass for that object. And then fire did access the pistol. Uh, that's the other object, B. And I'm just gonna draw it uh, in a way that's easy for me to draw, something that kind of encloses A, B, uh, with the velocity of that O. So this is. Um, uh, I guess this is meant to be a, a velocity of the bullet or object A. And I'm given the mass of the uh, pistol or the object B. Yeah. So what you imagine here is at some moment in time, there's going to be some kind of interaction, uh, um, explosion, I guess, of gunpowder <laughs> that's going to break apart these two objects. And as that happens, uh, I know one piece of information, which is that this object is moving in one direction with some speed. And what this question is asking is, what is the recoil velocity of the pistol if we were free to move backward? So that we are explicitly saying that conservation of momentum is followed. If something is holding onto the object B and not letting it move, then momentum won't be conserved. So in that hypothetical scenario where the 
<laughs> in the hypothetical scenario where the object is free to move, it's asking you the question, what speed is it moving at? So this is kind of a, a typical physics question where a setup is described and it's um, described with uh, enough detail to fix all the quantities. And the task of someone solving this problem is to, um, is to figure out this unknown quantity using laws of physics. And here, using some relationships that you can figure out. And usually the relationships are given from laws of physics. Here, the law of physics you use is conservation of momentum. And the hint more or less spells this out. Um, it kind of tells you all this and um, actually even gives you this expression <laughs> and you can just uh, plug in the numbers. Um, so let me, I, I guess uh, it's uh, um, it'll save me time to just, uh, um, it, it will save me time to just uh, write this. So let me uh, write that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so where this description of the situation and Z is the momentum, magnitude of momentum that this object A has, that's uh, MA, VA, that magnitude of momentum is going to end up equal to the magnitude of this momentum that's going the other way, um, MB, VB. Um, and there's some um, algebra you can get through to uh, drive this more step-by-step, step, but that takes another three or four minutes. So I'm skipping that to save time. So uh, starting out from here, what you have to do to solve for VB is you have to solve for it. <laughs> you have to do a, one more step of algebra. Uh, looking at it here, I think what I can do is I can multiply the whole thing by one over mass of the um, mass of object B. Uh, when I multiply this on the left-hand side, it's going to cancel out the masses, leaving me to just the speed of B. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have um, MA divided by MB. So let me do that here. Um, VB, ca having canceled out the mass, is equal to, uh, I still have this on the numerator, this on the denominator. Mass of A times speed of A divided by mass of B. So in this expression, I have all the quantities on the right hand side. I've been tracking the quantities that were given in the question, mass of the, op, um, mass of the object A, mass of the uh, object B, and speed of object A. So it's a matter of plugging the numbers. And if you work through the unit, you will see that the grams cancel out. So I don't have to worry about converting those. They'll just cancel out. And the meters per second that's given there, that's going to be this speed here. So let me just uh, plug in those numbers. I have uh, mass of A, 9, times speed of A as it exits, that's uh, 360, uh, sorry, 380, divided by mass of B, that's 500 grams, equals 6.84 meters per second. 6.84 meters per second. And that's it. Um, yeah. And so, you know, even if you weren't holding on to the um, gun, it, it, it doesn't move that fast. It, it's a non lethal speed at which it's moving. So, so, yeah, this is one kind of numerical example with the uh, um, stuff. I, I think this is on the probably slower side of movements. You know, I actually don't know that much about guns. I don't know if that's a slow or fast. When I wrote the question, I probably researched to make sure it's at least in the ballpark range, but I, I don't know if that's uh, slow or fast. <laughs> so, uh, so that's an example of recoil. Uh, there are other examples of recoil that you can find, uh, that, but I think a lot of them do involve uh, military <laughs> example. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, let me, so I think that's the last question I had of this set that I thought I should go over. Um,